welcome to St Altman's. Whether you are here in the building or whether you are joining us from home, you are very welcome. And if we have any visitors here, you are especially welcome. And please um, to help yourself to breakfast, goodies and drinks throughout the service. Uh, my name's Jacqueline, I'm a licensed reader here, and uh, Faye will be coming and doing our talk, and we have Alex and the worship group leading us in our sung worship. Let's start with our opening prayer together, and I invite you to stand with me if you'd like to, as the words come up on the screen, if you can say the words that are in blue, light blue, because that looks blue as well. Turquoise. I need the screen one. Dear God, this church is a family. As we sing and make music, dance, sign and wave flags, help us to worship together. As we read your word and hear stories from the Bible, help us to learn together. As we talk with you about things that are important to us, Help us to pray together. As we talk, discuss, and share our ideas, help us to work together. As we colour, make things, and act out Bible stories, help us to create together. As we eat, drink, and chat, help us to share together. And please, God, help us to reach out to everyone with family love. Amen. Please have a seat for a second. The theme of our service this morning in the cafe church as we are working through different characters from the Bible being giants of faith and how we in our daily lives can be giants of faith uh, for Jesus. And today we are thinking, because it is Palm Sunday, we are thinking about the two disciples who were sent to fetch the donkey they are our giants of faith because they were doing something really unusual. They didn't know if it was going to go well, but they trusted Jesus. So our theme for the day is go with the flow. Trust God. So I hand over to, uh, to our worship group and there are flags, children's flags at the front, adult flags at the back, musical instruments. There are loads of resources on the table at the back just as you walked in the door. There's colouring, drawing, um, chat discussion things. Uh, and also, if you haven't yet made your palm branch, one second. If you haven't yet made your palm branch, then please, if you'd like to, may, make a palm branch to wave during the Bible drama. And at home, find yourself something that you can wave, maybe a scarf or something like that, so that you can join with us. Thank you, Alex. Please stand if you're able and um, wave your branches as we sing and worship. He's coming on the cloud. And kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. This broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion and the Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. And every Open up the gate, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is 
here to set the captives free. But who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion, the lion is Judah. He's roaring in power and fighting our battles. Daring we will bow before Him. Our God is a lion, the lamb that will slain for the sins of the world. Praise the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Child of God 
children of God. Please take a seat. Um, We are about to have our dramatised Bible reading. If you would like to actually read the text, it is mainly from Matthew 21, and there are some Bibles at the back if you would like to look at it, Um, but we've also pulled in a little bit from the other Gospels, because all the Gospels mention the triumphant entry. And today we have uh, members of our Shine Lighthouse group um, and a few others who are going to um, bring the drama to us. Um, But there is a place for everybody, so when the action gets down here, and we'll give you the uh, nod that um, people hear what's happening and they come and wave their palm branches. And I've left the other one down here now. So if you've made one, you can wave your one that you've made. Um, And if not, there are some palm trees down here that you can come and help yourself from a palm branch. And we're going to line the aisle here, but not yet. Not yet. We're going to line the path and welcome Jesus in. Please be careful. These are a little bit spiky. They're safe, but don't poke anybody with them. Okay, team. Come hither. They're lovely. Jesus and his disciples were walking on the Mount of Olives. They were going to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, along with thousands of other Jews from across the country. Jesus stopped and turned to Philip and Matthew, saying, I need you to go to the village ahead of us, where you will find a donkey tied there. Philip and Matthew were very confused. Uh, then what? They asked Jesus. I need you to untie it and bring it to me. But the two disciples still looked worried. Jesus put a hand on Matthew's shoulder. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs it, he told them. Philip and Matthew were still not completely convinced, but smiling and waving a cheery goodbye to Jesus and the others, they set off straight away. Philip and Matthew did as Jesus asked. They found the donkey and began to untie it. But But the owner asked, what were they doing? Jesus has need of your donkey, they told him. And the man shrugged cheerfully and told them to take it with his blessing. And so... They took the donkey back to Jesus. Jesus, is this for you to ride? No one has ridden it before. Is it safe? The disciples asked in concern. But Jesus assured them that it's perfectly safe. So one of them throws their cloak across the donkey's back and Jesus gets on. They carry on walking towards Jerusalem. (laughs) They carry on walking towards Jerusalem, and as they get closer to the city, people begin to notice them and recognize Jesus. Quickly. The news of Jesus' arrival spread quickly through Jerusalem. And everyone wanted to see this important person. 
As Jesus came closer, riding the donkey colt with his disciples walking beside him, the crowd started clapping, cheering and shouting. So if you'd, if you'd like to get some, get some palms. Look, look, there he is, shouted one man. It's Jesus, the son of David. Let's cut down these palm branches and wave them to celebrate his arrival, someone replied. So the people cut down the palm branches and began to wave them excitedly. Jesus was smiling and waving and reaching out to touch people's outstretched hands as he passed by. Then someone shouted, here, let's take our cloaks off and lay them on the ground. He is royal after all. Let's make a carpet of cloaks for him to walk across. And so the people laid their cloaks down on the ground in front of the donkey colt and Jesus. There was lots of shouting and cheering. Some members of the crowd ran ahead of Jesus, while others followed behind. Everyone was so pleased to see Jesus, they started shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Would we, can we try that again, everybody? <laughs> Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. By the time Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, the whole city was aware of, aware of his arrival. Who is this person? Some of the city people asked. This is Jesus the prophet. He's from Nazareth in Galilee, they were told. Am I on? Yeah, there we go. Lovely. So, well done, dramatists. I think that was fabulous. Um, and particular credits to the donkey. Oh, I need to go on the stage. Sorry. Sorry, I was too involved in the action there. Um, brilliant. Um, well, what a brilliant um, enactment of Jesus um, getting uh, into Jerusalem. The Jesus that everyone was hailing as the Saviour. And when they were saying Hosanna, they were saying Saviour, come and save us. Um, which is fantastic, isn't it? Um, Hosanna. They knew from the prophecies that Jesus was going to be the king that saved themselves from themselves. They were very excited about it all. And that's why they used the palm branches. The palm branches were signs of Jesus' kingship. It was like they were welcoming a new royal, a bit like we might wa um, wave flags if we were going outside Buckingham Palace. The, the palm branches were like acknowledging God's uh, powerfulness through Jesus. Now, the real hero in that dramatization, I think, was the donkey. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I would have wanted Jesus on my back all the way down here and round through the city center. That was, a, yeah, let's give, let's give Jesus um, the donkey a clap. Um, and excellent riding by Jesus, obviously, as well. That was, that was excellently done. But, we know, before the story began, Jesus had been ministering in, the, in, the, uh, in Israel. He'd been praying for people. He'd been bringing healing miracles. He'd been setting people free from things that trapped them. Many people had seen him do these miraculous uh, works. But there he was, the Messiah, this promised um, king who was going to change the world for them. And he was driving, driving, being carried by a donkey. Now, a donkey isn't perhaps the Rolls Royce of the ancient world. The Rolls Royce of the ancient world might have been a camel. Wouldn't have been the donkey, not a horse, but a donkey was chosen. And we wonder today, although we're focusing on the disciples as well, we're also focusing on that donkey. The donkey. I'm going to challenge you today. Will you be a donkey disciple for Jesus? That's my question. So, 
If I'm asking you that, let's think a little bit more about what a donkey is like. So, what was the donkey carrying? The donkey was carrying the presence of Jesus. So Jesus himself was sat on the back of the donkey. He was sat on that donkey and he was being carried in to Jerusalem at Passover time. He was being carried in as the king, but he chose to be on that humble donkey. A little awkward looking maybe, not maybe the most majestic, sorry. But that was who, uh, who God chose. God chose a humble animal to be the bearer of his presence into the world. So, the donkey, as we saw, can carry a huge weight. They're known for carrying big weights. And often we think of donkeys and we think of them being straddled with big uh, pack bags that carry the weight. Now, if we're being like a donkey for Jesus, we might have a weight to carry for him. We might have responsibilities. We might be responsible for being a mother or a father. We might be responsible for being a teacher. We might be being responsible for carrying suffering and pain. We might be responsible for carrying love. All of these things that we bear, that we carry for Jesus, can be a bit weighty. I wonder, are you being a donkey for Jesus right now in carrying a weight and a responsibility for God? Now, I didn't know this before I was doing the sermon preparation for today, but donkeys are known to be natural opposers to animals like lions. I don't know about you, but I've always been taught that the lion or the elephant, depending on quite where your biology is, is the king of the jungle. So the lion, the king of the jungle, the big scary beast. Well, in olden times, apparently the shepherds had with them donkeys. Nowadays, we might see a shepherd with a dog, but actually shepherds in the ancient times would have donkeys with them. And donkeys were brilliant at protecting the flock from attack. And apparently you can, get, you can see videos of donkeys kicking at lions and then lions fleeing. That was a new discovery about donkeys for me when I looked into this. So the donkey for Jesus here is somebody that defends the defenseless. Jesus would have been vulnerable we are vulnerable, others are vulnerable, but we know that God's heart is a heart of justice and mercy. I wonder whether we, as followers of Jesus, as donkeys for Jesus, I wonder whether we fight for justice. There are so many issues in the world at the moment that are about justice and injustice, wars being fought that are unjust. Do we take a stand like the donkey? Do we say no? Get off enemy, in Jesus' name. Maybe where the devil would try to steal people away from Jesus, would be trying to convince them that they don't matter to God, or maybe that God doesn't exist. Do we stand and say, no, that's not the truth? The truth is that Jesus loves you and cares for you. Do we fight? Do we fight on the side of justice? So what else was the donkey? He was the bearer of God's presence. He was humble in position, but he carried big weight. And he was a natural opponent to attack. Well, the donkey and the colt was, were available. So Jesus said to the disciples, go and get the colt that's tied to the donkey and get both the donkey and the colt to carry me. So those disciples, as we've said and we've looked at, they were really obedient. They kind of just went up to this owner and just said, can we have the donkey for Jesus? Um, our father needs it. Jesus needs it. That was bold and brave, and they were unafraid to do that. And the owner of the colt and the donkey. So the colt is a baby donkey. So I'm really speaking right now to all the parents that have brought a young person today. Younger people, you're the colts. Older people, you're the donkeys, all right? So the donkeys and the colts. And Jesus, actually, in the Matthew text, it says that Jesus rode both of these animals into town. They would have had um, a... Um, oh, what's the word? Sorry. Um... The yoke, the yoke between the donkey and the colt that Jesus would have been carried on. And so Jesus finds them, and what are they? They're available. 
the maker makes them available, the owner makes them available, they say, yes, okay, we'll carry you, we'll do that. So the donkeys are available to be used by God, to carry in God's presence. I don't know about you, sometimes I get so busy with life that I forget that I'm a carrier of God's presence into the world. And being available, being open to listen to God and say, actually, Lord, where do you want me to be today? Are there people that particularly you want me to be on side of? Are there people that you want me to defend? Are there people that you want me to witness some of you to? This donkey was available, and so were the disciples. So my question today, as I've said, is are you willing to be a donkey for Jesus, a donkey disciple for Jesus, somebody available, somebody willing to carry and bear his presence? Because you do as a Christian, you do bear his presence. But do you bear it well? Do you look out for opportunities to bless others? And this isn't a a criticism at all, but sometimes we need a reminder that actually we're here for a purpose. Jesus had a purpose for those disciples to get that donkey, And the donkey's purpose was to carry Jesus into the town, to carry him in, and to proclaim his works and his ways. So, we've got some discussion sheets at the back. um, And if you haven't grabbed one yet, do grab a discussion sheet just from the back table. So we're going to have a little bit of time to think about some of the questions raised by today's talk. Will you be a donkey disciple for Jesus? Um, Have a chat with the person next to you, um, or either side of you, Uh, just about the questions that we've got on those sheets and it'll help us think a little bit more about how to be donkey disciples. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Faye. As well as the discussion questions for adults, there are also some family-related discussion questions. Um, There are some colouring sheets. There's also some plain paper if you want to draw your response.
and Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. He's called the Lion of Judah, who has triumphed. He has triumphed over temptation and sin, over pain and suffering, over fear, over death, even over the devil himself. Jesus is the lion who retreats from nothing. So why didn't the donkey kick out? Because Jesus is also the Prince of Peace. He has power to make peace where we in our world cannot bring it about in personal situations and global situations. He is both the Lion of Judah and the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Nigel. Has anybody else got anything? If you raise a hand, I'll bring the microphone over that they particularly want to show. So uh, we were discussing the questions and um, we talked about that you need to be bold to talk about Jesus in your daily situations to people who don't know about Jesus and um, you need to be bold to stand up to things where there's injustice and it takes courage and uh, faith to, to do that. Fantastic, thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. So, invite the uh, work. We should have ten people stood in the front. So, oh yeah, we've got some more. So, Paul, can you put the chorus up for me? Because I can never remember the order. Yeah, we need to stand in the right order. Up on the top step. Up on the top. Daniel, Esther, Rahab, and Ruth. Where's Ruth? Right. David. Stand up, stand up on the top one for me. David, Elijah, Noah. Where's Noah? Noah. Noah's down this end, and the rest of the team. You represent everybody else, including today's two disciples. Okay. Moses. Is that the first one? Moses, Joseph. Okay, so when, spread out a little bit so you don't bump, bump the person next to you. And when your name comes up, hold it up high above your head. Okay. If you'd like to stand, we'll sing this together. So for those who were here early, we had a run through of this uh, just before the service starts, but do join in. The chorus has an echo, so if you don't get the name of the person the first time, join in the echo with Neil and just repeat it. God that I read about with me, and I'm gonna be a child of faith, like Moses, Moses and Joseph, Joseph Daniel, Esther, Rahab, and Ruth, no denying the truth, the giants of faith, and like David, Elijah, Noah, and the rest of the team, I'm gonna be a giant of faith. I'm gonna be a giant of faith. Every day we always stick together, hand in hand, through every adventure. If I'm playing with my friends, or when I go to sleep. Watching me when I open my Bible, it's clear as can be. The 
God that I read about with me. you will see an outline of a palm branch and on the tables at the front here you will see um, palm crosses. If you would like to help yourself to a palm cross and take that back to your table or send one person to go and collect half a dozen for your table that is fine. We're just going to take a few moments now to pray for any of the things that are on here. I really wanted to include this morning praying for peace in Jerusalem. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey and Jerusalem is currently at war and there is so much trouble in that country and we as Christians are asked to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So pray for whatever you want to off the palm leaf on your tables um, but can we please pray for peace in Jerusalem and we'll just have five minutes of prayer.
tables. Take hold of every prayer that we pray, every prayer that we think. And Father, as we particularly are praying for Israel and Jerusalem at the moment, Lord, we do pray that you would be that Prince of Peace in that nation. Amen. Amen. So, um, we're now going to have church family news, and I've just left my sheet on the table, which was very stupid. Apologies. Um, thank you. <laughs> because it's Holy Week, the week before Easter, there's quite a lot going on. So I'm going to read out what's happening today. So at 3.33 today, we've got St. Paul's family service. At 6.30 tonight here at St. Alkman's, we've got Wellspring, which is worship and prayer night, uh, hopefully um, using the gifts of the Holy Spirit here this evening. We've also got the option of at 7 o'clock at St. John's Soul Centre, uh, which is more contemplative prayer, which is beautiful over there at 7. Then this week, we've got on Thursday, the 28th of March at 7.30, a Tenebrae service. On Friday, Good Friday, we have at 7.30 here the reflective Good Friday service. On Saturday the 30th of March, that's um, Holy Saturday, 10.30 till 12.30, we've got hot cross buns and crafts, something suitable for all the family. So come for a cuppa and a hot cross bun um, and some craft. And then on the 31st of March, Easter Sunday, next Sunday, we'll be having an all-age celebration here at 10. That's great. So those are all the services that are happening this week. They're also on Facebook and on our website. So if you forget, either watch online again or look in one of those sources uh, and also in Church Family News. Um, and now we've got an announcement about the APCM electoral roll. Um, Alex, do you want to come up? Um, so our APCM is our annual church meeting that happens uh, this year on the 17th of April, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's the 17th of April, um, and Alex is going to talk to us about the electoral roll. Hello. So the electoral roll is a list of um, names and members of the church. You can come to church without being on the electoral roll. However, if you want to join the electoral roll, um, now is the time to do it so that you can vote at the APCM, and you can stand if you wanted to come onto PCC, which... Um, we would love, and I'm sure Faye will mention in just a moment. So if you don't know if you're on the electoral roll, there is a list on the notice sheet and the, on the notice board outside of all the members on the electoral roll at the moment. So if you'd like to add your name, you need to do that today. Legally, the electoral roll needs to close before the APCM. So it's closing today. So if you want to get me a form today or give it to Faye, then we can include you in the electoral roll for this time. Can I encourage young people over 16 who are baptised, you can also join the electoral roll. It's not just a thing for grown-ups and parents. But uh, think about it, not for very long, because today it's closing, but think about it and um, see if you want to join the electoral roll, and today is the last day for that. Um. And on that, we do have a few spaces on our PCC. So we have people that serve a four-year term um, and that stand down. Um, so there are a few spaces available. If you have a real heart and a passion for this church um, and would like to be involved in the leadership discussions about how this church is run and how we operate, it would be great to have you on team. Um, with the PCC, you do need to be a member of the electoral roll and would have needed to be for six months as a worshipping member here. Uh, so if you've been worshipping here for six months and if you can get your electoral role form in if you haven't already it would be great to have you stand um, and there are there's information about that speak to Mina or myself will with regards to that um, because you need to be um, recommended and then seconded by somebody um, in the congregation but it would be great to have a bit more representation particularly of younger ages but we also need older ages too we love and appreciate all of your wisdom uh, and all of your input so if you're feeling a little god prompt for that please do come and speak to Mina or myself. Okay, and we're going to carry on in, in sung worship now, um, and we are going to have our offertory as part of that. So um, if Paul could, could be ready with the offertory baskets for the team on uh, collection today, that's great. Thanks, Alex. So do stand if you're able, and we'll finish um, with the last two songs.
So come and be chainless, come and be fearless, come to the foot of Calvary. There is redemption for every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. So come and be chainless, come and be fearless, come to the foot of Calvary. There is redemption for every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer. We are free. From sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound! Oh, how grace abounds! We will praise the Lord our rescuer. Yes, we will praise the Lord our rescuer. Amen. As we stay standing, let's say our final blessing to one another. The words will come up on the screen. It's from um, Ephesians. As we go into this week, I'm asking God to give you a gift from the wealth of his glory. I pray that God would give you inner strength and power through his spirit, and that Christ will live in your heart through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground in which you sink your roots and on which you have your foundation. This way, with all God's people, you will be able to understand how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And you will know this love, which goes far beyond any knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us, now and evermore. Amen. God bless. Go in peace. <laughs>